Hello and welcome to a Build and Deploy. My name is Sudeep Pai. I'm a Principal Cloud Architect with Oracle. Today, I'm here with Austin Mosley, Senior Manager IT Services for ETCC. We are here to talk about how Austin and his team have built and deployed their mission critical workloads on OCI. How are you today? Good, good. Great, can you tell us a bit about your company and your role? My name is Austin Mosley. Um, my company is ETC, which stands for Electronic Transaction Consultants. Our job is to collect toll revenue for, uh, for different toll agencies around the country. We have two main products. One is what we call Right Suite, which is the solution that we deploy on the roadway. It's essentially IoT um, that collects and the data from the roadside systems and then builds transactions that are transmitted to the back office. The other solution, the other product is uh, called Ride Horizon. We have different versions of that, and I think we're gonna talk about one of the legacy versions here in a little bit. But the purpose of Ride Horizon is to collect the transactions from the roadside and then to bill those to customers' accounts. Um, this is a vertical ERP that faces the toll industry. It's a full service solution with call centers, online web portals, interfaces sometimes to 30 or 40 different uh, people such as uh, collections, um, lockbox, bank, credit card payment vendors. It's, it's a very big and, and complex solution. My job is not only internal IT, but security, but also the, uh, the deployment and maintenance of both um, the uh, back office and the roadside solution. So I have all of IT at ETC. Could you tell us a bit about what workloads you are running on OCI today? Sure, yeah, today uh, we're running a lot of workloads on OCI today. Uh, probably the most important, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, is the, uh, the legacy toll revenue collection systems that we recently migrated to, uh, to the cloud. We uh, have two types of workloads. We have one workload, which is the roadside, which is IoT up and down the roadway, which collects and uh, transmits transactions at the back office. And the second workload is the vertical ERP, what we call Ride Horizon, which is a vertical ERP facing the toll industry, um, which collects uh, the, all the transactions, bills the customer, and then handles all the customer support requests that come in. So that's called Ride Horizon. Can you spend a few minutes talking about the components of the architecture that you are using on OCI? Sure, as, as I mentioned before, um, this solution that we're, we're talking about, um, it's a legacy solution that we built about 10 years ago. It's an primarily all Oracle solution that we use WebLogic Oracle reports in the Oracle database. Um, it collects about a half a billion dollars worth of tolls for the state of Washington, uh, primarily the roads in and around Seattle. Um, it has, uh, multiple tiers of architecture today. Um, one of the most important things to note is that this is a legacy solution. So we had originally built it using a number of off-the-shelf components. One would be the Imperva uh, Encapsula, which is a WAF running on the, the uh, Imperva cloud. Um, and then we also have Palo Alto firewalls and the F5 load balancer. We were able to work closely with Oracle to get those out of their marketplace and get those VMs up and running. So in terms of components, as you can see from the diagram, we have a public subnet, private subnet, and then uh, within those network subnets, there are various components. So we have uh, load balancers and firewalls. We have application servers. We have internal workload servers. Finally, we have the database system, which is 20 terabytes. And we have uh, network attached storage, which stores all our unstructured data, such as images and PDFs. And that's about 50 terabytes. Can you talk about how an online user accesses the system? Sure. So as you can see from the red diagram here before, you've got online users. That would be just your regular patron that has a vehicle and a toll tag or their pay by plate. Um, they're driving around in their car and they come in through online. We've got about a million accounts in the system today, and probably the majority of the uh, customers do self-service through the portal. So they come in through the Imperva WAF, and from there they're handed off to the Palo Alto firewall, mm -hmm. and then they come in through the F5 load balancer. From there, that's load balanced across the external application servers, 
And then from there, the external, the external application servers will talk to the database or to the NAS, depending on, on what information is needed. Um, customers may create an account. They may uh, run a report. They may need an expense report, for example. Um, or they may just want to add a tag to their account or, or close their account. One thing, another thing to point out too, is that uh, this is a legacy solution. Oracle has been very supportive in terms of bringing these over, but we've also been through a, a full PCI audit with this solution as well. Now, do the ETCC employees also access the system? What does that workflow look like? Uh, yes, they do. We have an operation staff consisting of about 120 people. Um, they either work from home or they work out of our Seattle facility. Uh, that's the blue line that you see there. They come in over a VPN, whether it's a Cisco AnyConnect or a site-to-site -site VPN. They come into the F5 load balancer. They go to the internal application servers. And then from there, they're routed to the database or the NAS. That operation staff, They've got multiple roles. The most obvious one is the customer service representative. Uh, they're getting a phone call or an email, or maybe they're even getting snail mail. Um, but we also have staff that mail out tags. They do what's called tag fulfillment. We also have a reconciliation and accounting staff that works closely with the state of WashDOT to do reconciliation. We have a data warehouse team that some of our staff and some of the state of Washington that come in over terminal servers and access the uh, uh, a standby database. Um, so yeah, we've got, we've got a lot of a lot of people on the system every day. Fantastic. What drove the decision to migrate these workloads to OCI? Well, the the primary decision was, was economical. Um, the project's in maintenance mode, and we needed to either a refresh the hardware because things were getting kind of old. Or B, we need to look at some alternatives. So we evaluated both greenfielding the hardware within our data center today, or B, uh, we, we looked at the cloud um, and we made the decision to go to the cloud, uh, you know, number one, because there was no CapEx, number two, the labor to move to the cloud versus to move to a new hardware platform was a lot less. And then long-term, the, the OPEX was much better. Obviously, there are other advantages to the cloud as well, but those were, the primary reason was economic. Great. In your opinion, what's the best technical advantage of using your uh, OCI deployment? Well, there's just not one, but I'd have to say that the number one is that we're able to take our legacy system today, as is, with no modifications, and stand it up as a standby site on OCI, and then execute a switchover. The development team did not have to make any changes. We didn't have any code changes to do it. We didn't have to change any of our configurations. We were just able to move. Um, there are other things that, that were important. Number one, we got a much higher availability because we were able to leverage both the availability domains as well as the different regions within Oracle to, to set up both the fault tolerance and the uh, standby. And then it was a much easier lift technically. The team didn't have to do any patching. They didn't have to do anything. Um, it it went, went very, very, very quickly. So, but um, we've been very happy with it so far. Great. One last question. What's next for your company with OCI? Uh, well, as I mentioned before, we've got other legacy workloads that we're moving. This system isn't small. Um, it's a medium sized system. We've had some of our customers watching this project um, and it's made them very excited over the last six months. So we've got some very large workloads that we're moving to the uh, right now, we've already moved um, a 100 terabyte plus system, and we're getting ready to expand that and continue to move uh, the rest of, of the non trust systems as well as set up a DR site for a customer. Uh, we're moving uh, another legacy solution called Central States to the cloud, which processes um, more money than this system does. And then we finally, we, we've um, taken our current product, which this system was the forebear of called Right Horizon. And we've um, refactored it so it's cloud native and runs on Oracle platform as a service, particularly Exadata uh, cloud service. And then we're also looking at leveraging some of the other things that Oracle has for some of these other components. 
um, either the uh, the WAF, the Palo Alto firewall, or the load balancer. So we're in the evaluation stage of that, but um, we're basically going to migrate legacy workloads that are remaining. Our customers are facing the same issue for their on-prem systems that we were. And B, we're going to run, build and run um, with our new solution. We've won several new contracts and we're aggressively bidding for more. Um, the fact that we're able to build and deploy very quickly on OCI has allowed us to be very competitive uh, in our space. So that's what we're gonna do next. Great. Thank you so much for joining us, Austin. This has been another Build and Deploy. Stay tuned for more such technical conversations with customers. Thank you.